Hello everybody. Just Biotech Geeks here. This lecture series will focus on the technique of gel electrophoresis. It is an important technique to assess our DNA or RNA after amplification or for the separation of the same and proteins. An introduction. Gel electrophoresis is a technique that is used to separate DNA, RNA, or proteins, and this separation is based on the size and charge. The word electrophoresis is derived from the Greek word phoresis, which means being carried, in this case by an electric field. It is an important technique used in biochemical and molecular studies. A small history on this technique. It was developed by Arne Tyselius, a Swedish biochemist, in the year 1937 and he won the Nobel Prize for this technique in the year 1948. He published the findings about this technique in his publication titled A New Apparatus for Electrophoresis Analysis of Colloidal Mixtures. So here we could see how molecules are separated based on their size during gel electrophoresis. Since the 1980s, these related techniques have evolved rapidly to become indispensable bioanalytical tools and became the fundamental for a variety of biochemical methods including DNA fingerprinting, western blot, southern blot and others. The principle. The process of gel electrophoresis works under the principle of the migration of colloidal particles through a solution under the influence of an electric field. When a potential difference is applied between the two electrodes in a colloidal solution, it has been observed that the colloidal particles are carried to either the positive or the negative electrode. In other words, they behave as if they have the electric charge with respect to the dispersion medium. The components. The components used in this process of gel electrophoresis are as follows. The gel electrophoresis unit, which consists of a buffer tank, the electrodes, the power cables connecting the electrodes in the power supply. The buffer tank holds the buffer and the gel during the gel run. The gel tray and dams are used in casting the gel for the electrophoresis process. Now for the important components that aids in the process. The gel. The gel used could be agar, agarose, starch or polyacrylamide. And this is selected based on the type and size of the analyte that needs to be analyzed. The loading dye could be bromophenol blue or xylene cyanol based on the analyte. The staining dyes are an important component which at the end helps us check our results after the gel run. Usually ETBR is directly added to the gel while it is in the liquid form. Due to its carcinogenic nature, CyberSafe, Gel Red, Gel Green, are used as safer alternatives. In these solutions, the gels are immersed for some time after the gel run. These are some of the loading dyes used and they differ based on the size of the analyte that's being analyzed. The buffers normally used are tris borate EDTA and tris acetate EDTA. These are specifically used for nucleic acids. The working. The working is depicted using the image shown. The first step involves the preparation of the gel by mixing agar, agarose or polyacrylamide with TAE buffer and microwaving the mixture until the powder dissolves. Usually, gel concentration include 1% that is 1 gram of powder in 100 ml of TAE buffer. The liquid gel after cow cooling is then poured into the gel cast and the wells are created by placing the cones. In the case of ETBR, a few ml of ETBR is added to the liquidized gel and mixed. Care must be taken when sealing the gel cast unit with cellophane tape or gel dams so as to prevent leaks. After the gel solidifies, make sure to remove the cellophane tape or gel dams. Many a times, people tend to forget to remove the tapes and so there might be no gel run happening. The gel is then placed in the unit and the buffer is added. Care must be taken so as to add the buffer before loading the samples. 
The samples along with the loading dice are mixed and the mixture is loaded into the wells. The gel run is started by turning on the electric field. This might take different timings based on the analyte and the concentration of the gel used. Usually the run would vary between 30 to 45 minutes. The gels after the gel run are dipped in the staining solution for about 15 to 20 minutes. This is done in the case of not using ETBR. The gels are then checked under the trans eliminator or in a gel dock. The applications. The applications of this technique usually involves the estimation of the different sizes of DNA strands present in many samples. Usually, DNA after restriction digestion is analyzed for its size. The enzymes used for restriction could also be removed when we take a particular slab of the restricted DNA strand. The analysis of PCR products could be done and this aids in DNA fingerprinting. In nanotechnology, gels are used to separate or characterize metal or metal oxide nanoparticles. It is also used in identifying and quantifying of proteins. So that's all for this lecture. Please stay tuned for the types of gel electrophoresis. Do subscribe to our Telegram channel for free softwares, notes and reference books. The link is in the description.